Hi, this is Fran with Little Windows. I want to show you some different ways that you can restore the shine to your resin pieces. Let's say your piece has either gotten scratched up a bit, or maybe you started with a mold that was not mirror finish. At littlewindows.com, our molds are polished to a mirror finish, so your pieces should pop out super shiny. Whether you're using photographs, dichroish films, or embellishments. This is especially important when you're doing more artistic pieces. By comparison, here are some pieces that came out of molds that are either damaged or are just not very shiny. Little Windows Brilliant Resin can be layered and it bonds to itself seamlessly. So you can add another thin layer to shine up your resin pieces, or you can polish them. First, I'd like to demonstrate the Flitz polish that's available at littlewindows.com. This is the best polish that I have found for working on our resin. It's the only one I've found that's non-toxic, it's acid-free, non-abrasive, and it's an eco-safe product as well. So you can feel good about using this. When you purchase the Flitz polish at littlewindows.com, it also includes a large microfiber cloth. This is a very good quality thick cloth that works really well for polishing resin. It also includes a guide with tips and techniques. You may want to use some gloves just to protect your nails and fingers when you're polishing resin. It's kind of annoying when it gets underneath your fingernails. Mine are pretty much shot, so I'm not gonna worry. I'm gonna show you a variety of pieces today. Some of these have come out of molds that are just not very polished. Other ones have been damaged along the way, and we'll show you how to repair those. And I also want to show you a couple of techniques that you can try. On some of these, I'm gonna add a piece of packing tape down the middle. That way, when we take it off, you'll be able to see the before and after. This piece is just a clear heart that is frosted. You want to put a little bit of the polish on. You don't need too much. I'm just going to spread this around the area where you want to polish. And then you'll turn your piece upside down and you're going to use a circular motion to begin polishing your piece. You really want to put some effort into this because it's your weight on the piece that's going to cause the shine. You'll want to work on a stable table too. This is already shining up. If you have cracks or crevices or a piece that's not quite even, you can also use your finger on your polishing cloth to rub the polish exactly where you need it to go. Um, I'm just going to wipe it here. So you can see this is quite a bit more shiny than when I started, but I want it to be even shinier. So I'll just repeat the process. But let's go ahead and peel off the tape so you can see the before and after. You can see that the right side is significantly shinier. And again, what I would do now is make sure to polish around the edges, probably polish a little bit more so I can get that really high shine back here. But you can see how easy that is. Let's try this piece next. At this point, it is really quite dull, almost a frosted look. This polish does have an odor to it. It's not terribly strong, but you may wanna have a window open if you're sensitive to smell. I'm gonna rub it around in a circular motion Make sure you're putting your weight behind this. That's what's gonna polish it up. And then just check the reflection. See if it looks nice and shiny. That looks really shiny to me. And you can see the right side that we polished is much shinier. Let's try a photo piece. Now this is a double-sided piece I made for a keychain. This is the normal finish of your Brilliant Resin. But after a while, if you make this into a keychain or a piece that's going to be banged around, it is going to get dull. This is a nail filing block that you would find in any beauty supply store. You can use this piece to get it to a certain point and then switch over to the polish to get that high shine. 
flip it over and get to polishing. Really put some effort pushing down as you move this piece in a circular motion. That's pretty shiny. I see a couple of swirls still, so I'll go back in, do one more polish, and that should be good as new. That came out nice and shiny. Let me demonstrate on one of these pieces. These were made in molds that were not highly polished. You're not gonna go from a highly scratched piece to a super shiny piece using just this polish. So if you need to use a wet dry sandpaper to get it to a point where it's mostly sanded and smooth and then add the high shine with this polish, you can do that also. This is doing more buffing than sanding really. Okay, so you can see how that's already getting smoother. We'll put a small amount of polish onto this piece. I'm gonna start just in the middle so that I can have a good grip while I polish. Make sure that again, you're pushing down firmly onto your cloth as you move in a circular motion. This is starting to really shine. So I'll continue this process and then afterwards I'm going to wash with cool water to get the residue off. So I finished that second polish and you can see that this is getting nice and shiny. And this got pretty shiny too. Let me show you the pores on these two pieces. And I'll do the polishing real quick. So again, here's our before and after. And that took less than a minute of polishing with the Flitz polish and microfiber cloth. I think that's gorgeous. Once you're done, just wash your microfiber cloth in cool water and let it dry before using again. I wanted to do one more test to see how well this Flitz polish will work on our resin pieces. So I got one of our molds. This is our large rectangle mold. And I scraped it up on the bottom. I'm not sure how well you can see this, but on this part, I took my mixing wand and I really scraped up the bottom of this as hard as I could. The second part here is a little bit more aggressive of a scratch. I used a round metal stylus and I scratched the bottom of the mold with it there. And then on this end, I used an actual X-Acto blade and I scraped it up so I can even feel with my finger well, this part I can barely feel, this part I can feel a little bit, and this I can really feel the gouges. Um, then what I did is I actually cast a piece in this mold so that it would pick up those scratches that I had made. So I wanted to see just how good this Flitz polish is and give you sort of a threshold for when you'll need to actually do some sanding uh, with wet dry sandpaper and then maybe some buffing before you use the polish for the high shine. But I'm just gonna spread this around. Again, I put a piece of packing tape halfway around here so that we can preserve our before and really evaluate the after. Again, I'm gonna stand up and put all my weight as I'm rubbing this around on the polishing cloth. So let's take a look. Well, it did a really good job on this least scratched part that was uh, damaged in the mold by the mixing wand. It's starting to really get at this part that was done with the stylus. You can see there are fewer scratches there, getting a better polish. But it really wasn't able to polish out these deep scratches. So I would think that one more round of polish will be able to get rid of these medium scratches, but that will really need to do a wet sand and a buff to get these ones. So I'm impressed with the results of just the Flitz polish. I know that I'll have some more work to do on these deep grooves, but take a look at how well this did after just two rounds of polish, one for about a minute and one for maybe 20 to 30 seconds only. And you can see the, the slight scratch marks here are completely gone. I've got a beautiful shine in this top section. The middle one's done with the stylus. I would say they're probably about 60 to 70% gone. I've got a few striations here that I think I could probably polish out with the Flitz polish. 
Uh, but these ones are just not going to go away. But I think that's a really good example showing you what to expect out of the Flitz polish and how much it can shine up your surface. Another way that you can add the shine back to your resin pieces is to just coat them in another thin layer of resin. This technique works really well if your piece is beyond polishing, let's say it's gouged up like this one is, or you have a very strange shape that would be difficult to polish by hand, or if you just want to add shine to part of your piece. For this demonstration, I've mixed up a half a batch of Brilliant Resin, with these small batches, you have to be very, very careful that the ratio is correct. Two parts of A combine with one part of B. If these ratios are off, it's not going to set properly. I'm going to stir for two and a half minutes and then let it rest in the cup for five minutes so that it can continue to blend and so that any bubbles can rise and pop before we use this resin on our projects. The first thing we'll do is remove the hardware on this piece. And then we'll need to seal the hole so that the resin doesn't leak through. Cut a piece of packing tape just a little bigger than the hole. Now this packing tape is going to stay here and it'll get locked in under the resin. So make sure to push it down. If you have a piece with curved edges, you don't want the resin to flow over. So either apply a very thin layer of resin or you can use fine sandpaper to rough the edge up a little bit, just so that the resin has something to cling to on the sides, and it'll be less likely to overflow. On these flat pieces, you can simply pour a small amount of resin and let it flow to the edge. And then just come back in with your mixing wand and draw the resin to the edge. And it will self-level. I'll do the same technique on this piece. Again, bringing the resin all the way to the edge. You don't need a whole lot to shine your resin piece up again. So unless you want to change the shape, be conservative in the amount of resin that you add. You can also use a small brush to apply the resin. We'll just dip into the resin and then brush it on. And if you put a generous amount of resin, those brush strokes will disappear. Our Brilliant Resin molds are all polished to a mirror finish, but most molds are not. So this is a way that you can create the shape that you want, and then afterwards get the shine that you want. So I'll show you how this looks when it's all set up, but you can already see the difference between the cast part that's not shiny and this part that has the resin on it. For this piece, I only want the dragonfly to be shiny. I want the rest to stay the matte finish that it was. So I'm going to apply a small amount of resin just to the parts that I want to stand out. And this is a really beautiful way that you can add dimension to your pieces. It's important that you use a brush that has a point so that you can Really get the resin just where you want it to be. And you can have your piece resting on the doming tray or you can hold it in your hand like I'm doing. It just depends on what you're comfortable with. These brushes are meant to be disposable, but I've found that if I clean them carefully, I can use them more than once. So the first thing you want to do is just wipe on a dry paper towel any excess resin. So what I then do is get some nail polish remover. And this one's on a pad. You can also put some nail polish remover on a dry paper towel. And then I just continue to clean my brush that way. What I'm trying to do is get any residual resin out of here. And I've been pretty lucky with this technique. Now that our resin has been setting a few minutes, we'll go back in and pop any remaining bubbles. And you can do that just by poking them or lifting them out with your mixing wand. 
You don't want to blow on your pieces because it could force that resin over the edge. The other thing you can do is take a butane lighter and flash that over very quickly on the surface. And that would pop any bubbles too, but I only had just a very few. And now you wanna cover your pieces with something that's going to protect them from any dust or debris that's in your air. The resin takes 12 hours to set up. So I'm gonna come back after that time and show you how these turned out. I've actually let these set up overnight, so let's take a look. Beautiful shine. And in this piece, you can see where we've applied the resin has a shine with the matte finish on the background. Again, look at the shine in this piece. They're beautiful. So now I just have a very thin layer of resin I will need to re-drill here to be able to attach the keychain again. And our little fish, here's the before and after. It really does look like a piece of glass. And my brush can be used for another project. For more resin tips and techniques, please visit little-windows.com. You'll find all kinds of project ideas in our project center and see what our other customers are making on our amazing makers page.